Good afternoon, class. In today's video, what I'd like to do is to go over types of chemical reactions. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the five different types of chemical reactions. Um, four of them are going to be um, definitely tested upon. This fifth one, combustion, is basically kind of a freebie, uh, more like a connection to the real world, because you've seen this reaction quite a bit. So let us begin. We're going to start with um, synthesis. So when we talk about synthesis, um, synthesis is basically you have two, two different reactants coming together. And so what that looks like is you've got like an exa my example, hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas combines into um, H2O or water. So what does that, and how do you even think about that? In fact, the question you might even ask is, why do I have this green mark over here and this red mark over here? Why is this two, red and green? The reason why is because in this chemical reaction, first off, let's make sure that we're clear about um, how the math goes on this one. Um, this is a chemical reaction in the sense that it is, it's like a math problem, except that um, there's no equal sign over here. This, is, this, this arrow means that this reaction starts from left and goes to the right. So we've got product, I mean, reactants on one side and products on the other side. So let's just make sure that, that that's clear. Um, so why is this, this two red over here? That's to show you that that number cannot be changed. It cannot be changed ever. It is inherent to the structure of whatever molecule that you're talking about. In this case, it's hydrogen gas. So with hydrogen gas, um, you will never find hydrogen on its own floating around in the universe. It will always combine with something, and in this case, it's combining with itself to form H2. This is something that you have to simply know. Um, that, is that is a very common um, occurrence, um, especially for common materials like hydrogen and oxygen. You will generally find that they are not free, they're not alone, they're always combined with something else, okay? So that's why, and that's something that's not told to you. So if I told you combine hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, you would actually have to know that hydrogen gas is H2 and oxygen gas is also O2. So that's something to consider. So now about this green um, coefficient here, what does that, why do I have it there? The reason why, and we'll get into that in the next few videos on balancing chemical equations, is that in this one, um, you've got, you know, you, you, can, you can't change these. These, um, red, these red numbers cannot be changed. They're inherent to the structure of the molecule itself. However, this, um, this two over here, this coefficient, can be changed at your, your, your discretion. So if you're going to change um, um, one of these numbers to make sure that one side be benefits or you know balances with the other side, perfect. You should go for it. Um, so one one of the ways to think about this is that um, the other rule that's very important for a chemical reaction is that all the atoms must balance. So however many atoms you have on the reactant side must be the same number of atoms on the product side. So for example, in this case, there's two times two hydrogen atoms, so four hydrogen atoms. And there are four hydrogen atoms on this side, four, two times two. In this case, there is two oxygen atoms, and there seems to only be one oxygen atom here, but because there's two water molecules, you multiply this two, this two multiplies through each of the um, elements, and so you get um, two oxygens on this side, two oxygens on this side, and everything is balanced, and we're all good to go. So that's how to deal with synthesis. Let's talk about decomposition. Decomposition is when you have one product that splits into two or more parts. So you can think of a leaf decomposing. It's turning into basically dirt. Um, you know, or in this case, the other, other way around. This one is um, the famous, a famous example of this to demonstrate that is to, t is to fill a balloon with hydrogen gas, take a candle, put it beneath it to pop the balloon, and the interaction with the oxygen in the air will form water vapor. That's how you can see a synthesis reaction like this. For a decomposition reaction, you can actually see this if we do what we call electrolysis, where we run an electric current through a bunch of water and it will separate the, um, the water into both hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So basically it's doing the exact opposite of the synthesis reaction would be the decomposition reaction. 
Moving on to the third example of a types of reaction, it is a single replacement reaction. And this is when a cation replaces the cation of another molecule and just basically kicks it out. So in this case, it would be something like this. You have, um, this is one of the, and by the way, this is one of the examples in the reading. So you've got uh, iron chloride plus three uh, plus zinc gives you iron at the end with zinc chloride. So how does that work? Well, the zinc atom says basically kicks out the iron atom and then replaces it um, with the you know as it combines with the chlorine atoms to find a more stable position. So that's how that that's a single replacement reaction. In a double replacement reaction, what happens is the cations are basically switching anions. So you've got the the um, the silver nitrate over here, silver moving to the outside, and then the sodium moving from the outs, the second reactant to the first product. So it's moving over this way. Now, typically, especially in the reading where I got this um, example from, you actually won't see this. What you will see is that they'll say AgNO3 plus NaCl leads to AgCl plus NaO3. The reason I did it like this um, was because I wanted to show you that it is the cations that are switching and not the anions that are switching because the, the reading might make it seem like the anions are switching and the cations are staying the same. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear on this. Um, and that, that should be about good for double replacement. Let's talk about combustion as, your, um, as, the extension, as part of the extension part of this, of the reading. Um, in a, it's a, combustion is, the reason why it's not, um, it's, we don't, I don't consider it part of the, the types of chemical reactions or, you know, there's some debate as to how well we should include them is because with combustion, it's basically a double replacement reaction. So, it, you know, in my example, I've got uh, uh, CH4 plus oxygen gives me carbon dioxide and water. That's a double, that looks like a double replacement reaction. However, there is the reason why combustion is on its own is one, it's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more common in, in our world because it's fire. You know, if you've ever seen fire, that's a combustion reaction. And the second reason that, that it is, oh, I like to, you know, that I like to at least go over it is because there's a very specific criteria that separates it from a, just a general double replacement reaction. And that, that separation comes in, in this form. The requirement for a combustion reaction is one of the reactants must be oxygen and the product must be of carbon dioxide and water. Those two products must be in there. You can have any, you can have a bunch of other stuff in there as well, but carbon dioxide and water being in the products is a hallmark of a combustion reaction. So I wanted to make sure I went over those different types of chemical reactions, um, give you some ideas of what's going on in this. Um, you know, in the next couple of videos, we're going to do a, we're going to do some actual balancing. So notice over here, I did a little bit of the balancing portion of this um, of these chemical reactions. However, in the next in the next videos, I'm going to go more in depth on ways to actually balance out the different chemical equations, the chemical reactions, so that you're able to, um, especially for more complex uh, more complex reactions. So, good luck in your studies. May the force be with you.